Welcome to the Fit Filiate Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Kirkman, and sitting alongside me is Tony Ronke, the founder of Fit Filiate and all round CrossFit OG. The mission of Fit Filiate is very simple to protect the affiliate model. Our sole purpose is to help affiliate owners and coaches attain freedom. We aren't here to tell you what to do, but to instead build your ability to believe in yourself. Enjoy the show. I'm CrossFit Aurelia and the um, journey Matt's been on. Speaking of first, how'd I get in the upper left hand corner this time? I'm never in the I, upper left hand corner. I, pr- I promoted you. I didn't want you down the bottom today. It's a better flow when we have a guest if you're up the top with them. Oh, look at that. I was like, wait a minute. Lisa's normally up here. Why don't I look the same as I normally do? Uh, <laughs> I promoted yeah, Matt was, most, most important first for Matt, though, is that Matt was actually client zero. Um, which Matt didn't know about, I think, for the longest time. I think we talked about that in the first podcast. So that's still your crowning achievement, Matt, is that you were still the first person that drove me crazy for a handful of months. Whether company, we figured out if this thing would actually work or not. Is, is, yeah. Matt's company the earlier doctor of earlier doctors. Well, I think the, being the first of everything. Like, just... Being a being a patient zero, I think is is a good segue into the conversation today because that was really the reason I wanted to bring you back on the podcast. Well, lots of updates, but um, to talk a little bit about really where you have been heading recently and that exploration um, in terms of finding your first kind of patient zero, your first kind of client zero. Um, patient might be a literal too literal of a, of a word in this situation, but um, I think that we can dig into that one because that's the thing that's the most exciting to me is basically this segue into physical behavioral therapy. Um, So we're going to give us a rundown of what you're working on there, Matthew. Um, Well, I mean, I feel like for that, we need the, the meme of like Charlie day. I forget what movie it's from, but where it's like pointing at the the board and it's got all the strings attached to it and everything. (laughs) That's, that's my that's life. essentially that's essentially where my yeah where my head is at um um i'll I, I guess since we have potentially an hour or more to kill i can give the long story is uh sure. anyone who tuned into my previous episode uh, of the podcast of number two I, I believe i discussed you know like what how we made it through lockdowns and things like that and, you know up here up here north of the wall, although Tony and I are very close proximity wise, there's just an invisible. I'm in Canada South, basically, at this big, point. Big, big body of water, yeah. Um, no, we were we went through four lockdowns, and that's not what we're going to talk about. But the the why we we got locked down our last two times was very specifically to protect healthcare capacity and hospital capacity. And so they, you know, the powers that be deemed gyms and restaurants still uh, high risk. And so to protect hospital capacity, we went, we entered two separate lockdowns over the course of, oh, geez, I believe it was potentially uh, six months. There was some time in between three to four. So, you know, my whole like mindset with anything, and this was even before I was an affiliate owner, was like, just don't get in my way. Like, don't let you be in the way. That's why I didn't do well in corporate. It was like, don't be in in my way of succeeding. And so it's like, you know, if you're going to, if your hospital, if, if we're protecting hospital capacity, fine, I'll solve that problem. So you don't become a problem for me ever again. <clears throat> and so that. That has been the topic of discussion on mine and Tony's call weekly for probably over a year now and, and really stumbling towards that. And maybe, you know, the idea of like thinking big, like that's a big arduous goal to, to go after. And especially as an affiliate owner, it's like, I'm going to come in and fix healthcare and so that you don't mess with my business ever again. And, uh, you know, we're in a a publicly funded system up here as well, you know, a a socialist style system. Um, So that led to just stumbling forward, stumbling forward. And of course, uh, it led to the usual conversations that I think a lot of affiliate owners potentially would resonate with if they've tried to have those conversations. It's like when you try to talk to a healthcare provider, like a physician will just say is, oh, the idea but, you know, we'll see where it goes. And it never really goes anywhere. Um, 
but I sent an email. So I figured out like, okay, who are the players of the game? Well, up here we have these regionalized health teams that are des designed to work together and things like that. And so I, I, I was able to weasel my way into one of the health teams and all that really means you're like, okay, what does that mean? Is I basically have a badge now that I can flash that say, Hey, I'm, I'm at least in the cool kids club now. I, it hasn't been the gateway, but it gets me into the cool kids club and it's, it's the next, the next step. And, uh, Maybe depending on how this episode releases, you know, if you figure, you know, had have had Tosh on uh, and have had Dale King on most recently and, and his his documentary just dropped yesterday as of the recording of this. It was a culmination of those two things where I tripped over the truth. And what I mean by that is um, within those, I, I did Diesel Day 2 with Tosh back in July. And really kind of leaned into like the left hand material and, and whatnot, and knowing that it's physical and mental are tied in together specifically. And so, um, when that was in July, I had basically a three week turnaround and then went to the games, talked to Mike G, head of, uh, of CrossFit Health, and he said, Oh, well, you got to talk to Dale. And so I didn't get a chance to talk to Dale, but I did what I kind of usually do is I just sent him a message and was like, Hey, can I come, come hang out with you and, and, uh, and see what you do. And I know he talked about this on the podcast. So yeah, I hopped in the old uh, jalopy and, and drove 10 hours South and hung out with them. And then it just became this visceral, like all at once about like, Oh my God, what we learned in diesel day, what Dale's doing what how we can actually affect healthcare by having something to to say here's what i'm going to do it's not just oh we do crossfit it's like no but this specific program that i'm going to create um has has its its value and, and uh you know is just continuing to knock on doors knock on doors led us to get an actual meeting with what's called the ram so one of the things is when you're publicly funded, there's a lot of small little things here, there, and everywhere. And the RAM clinic stands for Rapid Addictions, uh, Ac Rapid Access Addictions Medicine. And uh, essentially, it's for folks who come out of a hospital setting of detox. They work through the RAM clinic, and then uh, it's a, an intermediary step. And then whether someone continues to go into treatment from there, that's up to them, or they want to. Um, they want to just feel fine, like, you know, continue on on their own. They're, they're able to do that as well. And so I, I said, Hey, we're working on this five week program, which essentially, because what really resonated with me and, and I hope a lot of affiliate owners, if you're interested in this discussion was listen to the Dale podcast, but go to his Portsmouth method seminar, because they said, we link cognitive behavioral therapy and physiological stress, AKA exercise to accelerate that quit versus don't quit conversation. And being able to articulate it that way to a provider, they were like, okay, I see what you're saying now. And, uh, and yeah, so we've got, I've got two participants in kind of trial program right now, which could potentially open the door to something much, much bigger should the results be favorable. So that's the 15 minute explanation of it all. <laughs> Nine minutes and 19 seconds, I feel like actually is what yeah. it took. But um, there's a couple of things I want to say. One, um, I have PTSD. So every time I hear the clock in the background, I'm about to start doing Tabata air squats. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a Tabata timer because I'm yeah. like, that's that's the right interval. That's but that's not what I want to yeah. talk about. Um, that's how you know you're a crossfitter when you just hear that beep, beep, beep. You're like, I'm squatting. <laughs> um, as long as they're not bottom to bottom. Mm. Um, so a couple of things about it, though, I think, you know, to anybody that's listening to this, um, I often worry that uh, as we bring in, you know, people that are either not coaches or people, you know, you know the greater proximity people like EC and stuff like that, people are like, yeah, yeah, whatever lost on you because it's absent in my affiliate relationship. One of the reasons why, obviously we're very proud of you as, as a client with affiliate. And so we want to bring you on for that reason. But one of the reasons is that the beauty of the affiliate model is that you can do anything you want with it. Right. And, and we, we have always supported that and in, in, endeavored to help you guys realize that 
to the best of your ability. And for many reasons, you know, what you're embarking on now is kind of like that, that sort of, I don't know, the, the, the poster child of, of, of that success, because no doubt about it, I, I would suspect that a small, small, small percentage of affiliate owners want anything to do with turning their affiliate into anything healthcare related. Although I would argue, of course, the CrossFit is in fact healthcare, but that's a completely different philosophy altogether. So what I think is important to start with in this one with you is that, you know, and even before, like, I think that they will definitely, people will lock in on like Tosh Diesel Day and then like Dale, you know, Portsmouth Method, like they'll think of things like that because they're very CrossFit centric. But like, even before that, Matt was literally kicking down the doors of, well, it first attempted to, you know, he wanted to sow his oats in the corporate wellness area. And we supported that endeavor from a, from a distance and let him kind of wallow in it to some degree of, of misery because it didn't really get anywhere. But mainly it was that he just wasn't speaking the solution that he wanted. But, you know, through a crystallization of Matt's why and really the just cause of why I really needed to exist, which is really truly overlooked by so many affiliates, right? And because of what you were trying to achieve, not in terms of like revenue and in terms of being an identifiably cool CrossFit affiliate or or an observably, you know, similar CrossFit affiliate, like you've been very clear probably since the beginning, maybe because we were we were helpful in that in the beginning. They're like, you wanted a really it to be something different. And I think maybe can you speak to a little bit about like really what drives you to kick in these doors, these medical institutions to be like, hey. I'm the CrossFit guy. Did I lose him? <clears throat> right. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's it's no, I'm I'm here. I'm I'm here. Yeah, it, it looks yeah. like maybe it's my suppression is slowing me down. My noise <laughs> suppression is not working. Suppression. Um but the the I think am I here still? Yeah. Yes. You're good. Um yeah. So it's it's a, a couple deep layers. There's two different layers to that that goes. Is yeah, I'm a I'm a disruptor by nature. Um, you know, I, as a kid, it was as your coach. That's disturbing. an understatement. <laughs> saying it's probably yeah, why you took right? it along so well. So I'm I'm not exactly right. I'm not entertaining unless I'm I'm either creating or causing chaos. And so there's that element, but the it's really laid in, I, I think what it, it, it wasn't so elegant and linear as Tony um, articulated it as, but in working with affiliate, it was, it was ingrained in me early that the affiliate can be bigger than me and that my affiliate shouldn't be my identity and things like that. And so I am still heavily involved in the affiliate um, because I, I, I love it naturally, but I am still working towards that truth moving forward to make it bigger than me. So I think that became the first step. And then uh, very coincidentally, I had sent it to Tony, but I started uh, this book. Um, it's called The Right Kind of Wrong. And it's all about intelligent failure. And really all this is, is a series of failures moving forward where I've always known that I've learned through failure. Um, and so I have a, a much higher risk tolerance, a much higher tolerance towards failure. So what's not written in, in this is all, as Tony said, corporate wellness by all accounts. <laughs> it's funny, I've been getting LinkedIn notifications about congratulating <laughs> me on my my work history of uh, four so years four years of owning the affiliate because I and the only reason why I have a LinkedIn profile because I was like oh I'll go on LinkedIn to get into the corporate world so I can get into the corporate wellness and and all that stuff and I haven't been on LinkedIn in a year and a half <laughs> and so mm. um, but yeah it was a series of failures forward that has led me to these things and and then i just want to go in and and disrupt the system because up here the system isn't working based on the fact that it closed my business down so it's like my whole instinct is like okay well i'm gonna go disrupt it right mm -hmm. but you the magic of thinking big 
stolen from the book is that it gets you to continue to think big and so and and puts things into perspective and you got to push past those those curtains to pursue purpose because in that pursuit of purpose is where you will find clarity in your answers um and, and really like um, one of being a coach with affiliate uh, this morning, one of my clients was sharing, they very successful, great for them. They got their first corporate nutrition client. And um, in doing an intake interview, that person learned like, wow, this, this, this girl, this lady who I was speaking with is 23 years old and, and over 300 pounds. And her why for doing this nutrition challenge is she wants to ride the roller coaster with her 10 year old kid sister next summer. Hmm. And that and the client, right, my client explaining that you could just feel the weight on her and like, and how visceral that, like that knowledge was for her because it was like before, you know, we're talking, you know, we want the same thing for all of our clients we're like how do we grow and like oh well i guess you know maybe i can find some people in the endurance community who who want to take their fitness to a different level and then they just had this complete 180 of like wow there's a lot of people we need to help and mm. and and now it puts things into perspective and my reason for telling that story is we kind of brainstormed well maybe they don't have a membership that we know it, maybe you start a, a walking club where they just mm. show up to the affiliate and do a one, a one mile walk and that's their membership. Right. And I think, and so like I said, as I bring that up is because, because the affiliate model so great, they can make that it's their business. Mm. You know, we, we're sitting here, we're like, we're like, I don't know how to play the play the game. It's like, no, you forget, you make the rules of the game. It's your game. Mm -hmm. You make it up as you go. And uh, they had this crystallization themselves and tripping over the, that truth of like, oh, wow, I can solve a problem and like solve a very real problem. And it doesn't have to be in a, a one hour class that has a, a whiteboard brief, a general warm up, a specific warm up, uh, prove it. You know what I mean? Like it, it's those things are great. That still exists. But man, create something new. And yeah. and every affiliate has the power to be in a field of one. And that's the risk of when we talk about it being, you know, the push to everyone be standardized and, and commoditized. Um, but when affiliates can be creative and, and create their own path there, they can be in a field of one and do their own thing, which is uniquely them, which that's the power of an affiliate. Other, you know, um, cheese dick fitness brands as we like to say are not able to go well you know what i'm going to do a walking club at 5 a.m because that's what you know we need this is our this is our operating template this is what we have to do with affiliates it's like you create that template and that's the power and i think that that's forgotten to a degree I think there's a couple of things that are important. Well, in that I'll conversation. share with you, uh, ahead, you know, is is very funny. Delays. Yeah. There. So yeah, I'm going to turn my, see, this is why I have the virtual back. This is the glamor of the affiliate. That's why I had it off. I think I, was was say, I mean, I don't know why you're blurring out the background um, anyway. At least it's your a reality. You're, you're in the so affiliate. used to it, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, but to, to Lisa's point, I'll, I'll share again, another thing is, so I have a new member in his first month. Well, he's a silent partner in an F45 franchise. And um, he was explaining to me that they do site inspections to make sure that everything's placed in the right order that, you know, that this playpen is in the right spot. And, and when they were building their, their facility, they couldn't get the flooring that they wanted. So they had to get their flooring approved by F45. You know, like just take that in for a moment when you're like, what is HQ doing for me? Or what do I get for my, what do I get for my affiliate fee? You get the ability to do whatever the hell you want and create the future that you want to do. And again, it could be 
you know, that's, that's, I, I love that there's space for affiliate in the community in the sense that if you're big on competitive athletes, man, absolutely <sighs> fill your boots. Just do that. Do that without doubt, without any, you know, don't just sit here and fluff about. If that's the direction you want to go, put your foot on the gas and go as fast and as hard in that direction as you want. But at the same time, I'm like, my whole thing is if 80% of the population doesn't do fitness, I'm going towards that 80%. I'm just an opportunist that way. And, and I go unapologetically in that direction. Same thing, full foot on the gas, ready to go. Yeah. yeah the, um, the affiliate model is, is no doubt perfect for many reasons, but the, the first of which is that it's individual, right? It's, and we've talked about that enough times. And if anybody's listening to this, I would assume at this point, you know, that like, we believe that you need to protect that individuality, but, um, you know, as it applies to like you and what you're working on it, being able to embark on an endeavor to do something like that. Like, I think one of the biggest issues that we see a lot with affiliate owners is that they are quote unquote, just a gym owner, right? Just an affiliate owner. And that, that troublesome identity, um, that, 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 that nihilistic sort of dismissive identity becomes partially one of the big Achilles heels to them. And that they're like, I just doing things like this inside this gym and inside this scope. And to Matt's point, the, there's so much more you can do with this thing outside the four walls to then fill the four walls with this thing. And, and, and if somebody starts talking about what that looks like, there's two dangers in that. The first one is that if we start talking about how to fill the four walls, then we start, we stop looking at ways to think outside the four walls. Right. And, you know, we can come up with marketing strategies on how to, you know, knock on doors and put out flyers and stuff like that. But that's really just the smallest piece of, of, the, of the puzzle. The bigger question is, why does your affiliate need to exist? Why was it worth all of your time, energy, effort? And what are you actually after? Which brings us really probably to the, the biggest thing that affects all small businesses. And that is that most businesses are just iterations of other businesses, right? It's, that's just kind of how it works. And like the number, the actual number is 86% versus 14%. 86% of all small businesses, all businesses in general are line item extensions of other businesses, right? Like you go into a diner, you think like, wow, this is a really cool diner. I want to open a diner. And you try to open just a better version of that other diner. And you spend your life basically doing it like, that is an excerpt. That is a stat that comes from um, basically the blue ocean strategy. But, you know, I think this is incredibly common as you see it in the affiliate model. And that one of the big allures to the affiliate model is the fact that like you can do something great with a relatively established roadmap, right? Like in meaning that like we have an idea of what an affiliate looks like coming into this thing. And so you're like, I just want to have one of those things. And there's a large chunk, 80 ish percent, I would assume of affiliates who are just like, no, no, I just want to be a line item extension of the other affiliates. It's the 14% that we particularly as affiliate are after, which is the people like yourself who were here to do something different and to move out of that red ocean, which is the other affiliate model into that blue one, and to really create something unique, different otherwise. And, and in your situation, you're moving into really working in the medical industry and making a, a true difference in your community through what is our identifiably a problem, especially thanks to the, the pandemic, right? And or highlighted by the pandemic. And so some people will listen to that and be like, not interesting. And that's okay, right? Like, because maybe they are just line item extensions and maybe they do just want to do workouts and, and work out really hard and just check some boxes and be okay with it. But those of you who are like, you know, I think that there's something bigger to this thing. Like those are the ones that we kind of try to attract here. And then we implore them to to do things like, you know, like Matsu and we got other people who are doing, you know, trying to build charitable things like schools in Kenya and stuff of, of that nature. It doesn't really matter what you're after. The thing is, is that if you're after something, you're going to have to go after it. Right. And most of the time that identity gets in the way. Right. And, you know, so you see somebody be like, I'm just a gym owner. So they, they, they curb their enthusiasm. They stop their just cause. And then they just, they sink to the level of the red ocean and they start to just try to compete with each other in that space. And then those are the ones who are making the cry of like, what is HQ doing for me? Right. And you're basically asking them to come in and make you all identifiably the same identical, right. To, to Matt's point about F45 and even the orange theory, all of them, not that I really want to say their names, but 
you're going to have to have $500,000 of liquidity to be able to even be considered as a candidate. You're going to have to buy this equipment package, which would be $200,000, $300,000. You're going to have to have this many members before you even launch, which for Lake Orange Series, over 400 people, which would is mind melting to most affiliate owners. Or you don't open. You could put in all that money and they decide that like, you're not capable. You're out, right? And so while we ask for all of these things, be very mindful of what you're actually asking for, which is in a red ocean, people, businesses will spend all their time, energy, efforts, and resources trying to define or determine why they're better than the identical opportunity across the street. You'll go broke. It's impossible to do it. But the affiliate model allows you all, every single affiliate, to be a blue ocean if you choose to be one. And so like people like Matt get it. And most of the affiliate clients all get it. And we push them towards it. And it's like Matt's point about his other client that he works with the affiliate having, you know, stepping into a corporate nutrition program. Everything is identifiably successful as long as it passes through the lens of what you as an affiliate owner considers successful. And that's where most people don't start from. They're like, how do we fix the affiliate model? Well, you can stop by trying to give them a universal sort of identification of success. I mean, sure, we could be like, are they profitable or not? But like, we're going to need to figure out like, what's their definition of success? And that's a problem for the industry as a whole, because it's really hard to sell you a, 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 a prepackaged systematized solution to, to fix your success when all of you guys have different solutions. And, but I think that that's the thing that needs to be protected. That's what Fitbit has always been after. But this isn't really about that so much as what what's the power of somebody like yourself being able to trip over the truth. Like one of the things that I think is super cool about being your coach and being involved in this journey is always when you guys trip over the truth. And like when Matt does get an invitation to be in a room of people who <laughs> arguably as quote unquote, just a gym owner, he steps into with a bunch of doctors and administrators and he's like, well, I'm the least qualified, dumbest person in the room. And then after an hour in the room realizing holy shit, these people are all as dumb as I am. In fact, maybe more so dumb, right? And in that being possible because of the, of the, of the opportunity that is being an affiliate owner, right? You can't, you're not, you're not getting an F45 invite. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. At least you're gonna have to blur that one out. I'm gonna get in trouble for that, but like, you're not going <laughs> to get that invite, right? And, and then on top of that, because of what you have at your disposal in the CrossFit lens, you can be effective in that room. You can't do that when you're just like, come do my workouts. They're, they're fun. Right. And so I think that'll bring us in the next conversation, which is like really what is the bottle lightning of the affiliate. But I think those things are, are, are vastly overlooked. And so many people are, are trying to sell doubt and insecurity to affiliate owners. You know, I think it's super important that they take opportunities to look at people like you, Matt and, and Dale and all the other people who are like things, people are doing things that are arguably identifiably very weird in a CrossFit setting, you're like, this doesn't seem like burpees and thrusters, like, you know, but they're really, really successful. And by successful, I mean, they're good at converting their communities. And that's, I think, important. I think only available to the affiliate. Well, it, it's true, right? And if you, um, you know, I, I hope everyone listening goes and orders uh, Small Town Strong, which again, just released as I, uh, I watched it yesterday. And and I apologize, Dale, if I got this wrong, but my interpretation of what is happening down at, at PSKC CrossFit and his integration in the uh, rehab world, it was someone else's idea. It was it was another member's idea. His his uh, and who the and yeah. So I don't want to spoil the the show, but he had the Dale had the freedom to pursue that idea because it was highlighted to him as a need that was much bigger. It was someone else just saying, hey, by the way, you see this problem that we have in our town? I think we can solve it with fitness, hmm. right? And then it's like those conversations are the key. And, you know, to pull uh, the, the darling of, I'm calling him the darling of this year's CrossFit Games, Jocko, you know, everyone knows Jocko and all his stuff. And he's, he's I think in a, it's not about him, but he was at the games this year his whole thing, discipline equals freedom. And then his second leadership book was the dichotomy of leadership. And, and dichotomy of leadership is a really important book because it tells you that it can be this 
until it has to be this. You do things this way until you do them this way. And so my reason for saying that is like, and bringing up discipline equals freedom is you have to be disciplined in the pursuit of something greater as well as solving the metrics that make a successful affiliate. Like, yes, success can be defined as whatever you want, but at the end of the day, we still need our bills to be paid. We still need money in our bank account and we need to be able to have that freedom to pursue those passions with that. So if you're disciplined in doing those things, which Tony has taken three years to do for me, uh, and that's a knock on me, not him, but it's <laughs> my given, discipline on display right it's, there. It's given me, it's given me the freedom to pursue these, these ideas. And it's also, I guess, the discipline to continue to pursue something bigger, bigger than me, even knowing when it's not successful, because if you lose that discipline, then yeah, it's easy to find distractions in the games, in finding a new programming. Oh, I don't like the cap workouts anymore. I'm going to switch to mayhem or whatever, right? We lose our discipline. And, and when we lose discipline, we find distraction. And I think we can see that in our members as well, right? But when you stay disciplined and focused, you start moving towards different conversations. And to Tony's point, the the you st I start to realize you know I think we as affiliate owners we're like oh well I need to talk to doctors I need to talk to doctors well all of a sudden when you actually talk to a few doctors you realize wow these people are affiliate owners in a different in a different industry they're owner operators they're headfirst in the battle just like we are and then we're like oh shit I'm not solving the patient's problem I got to solve the doctor's problem. And he'll send me all the patients I need mm -hmm. and, and, and realizing, wow, all these people by getting out of my own little bubble that I want to of comfort that I want to create with myself, I realize I'm not necessarily the smartest person in the room, but I might be the most strategic. And maybe that's what that group's needing is a little strategy. It's just an exposure to an outside perspective, really. Right. Cause like the groups like that, much like, any group, they just fall victim of group think. And you and I've talked about that enough times, but like, you know, to your point, I think it is a powerful sort of, of realization or narrative when you do get to meet a bunch of doctors and you're like, wow, these dudes went to school for 20 plus years to learn about biology, anatomy, you know, and virology, et cetera. And then they find themselves being like, I guess I need to open my own practice. Cause that's where I go next. And you see this with dentists all the time. And let me tell you, if you think you have problems as an affiliate owner, I can assure you that your cash flow problems pale in comparison to people who have net 90 insurance reimbursements and this and that. And like they find themselves being like, I can tell you everything about the human immune system, but nobody told me anything about balance sheets, cash flow statements, or otherwise. Right. And so what do they do? They go to the bank and they borrow to Rob Peter to pay Paul so that they can just get there until insurance pays their check. And and the the lessons in the in the trials and the tribulations are the same. And I know that this podcast is largely centered around affiliates and one of our big things that we're mindful of is that like, I think we perpetuate the narrative that affiliates are struggling, but dude, it's all small businesses, right? It's a tale as old as time. The baker is really good at baking. They start making the best bread. Now they're like, you know what I need to do? I'm gonna open my own bakery. And then they find themselves completely ill-equipped to handle the bakery, but they can still make the shit out of that bread. And I think that that brings us to a big part of what makes the affiliate model so special and where I think it's the bottled lightning for HQ. And I'm not even sure that they know it. And Matt and I've talked about this enough times, but like the beauty of the affiliate model is in its exposure to coaching. Right. And, you know, I think that everybody knows this to some degree, but it's the, if you're hung around here, it's obviously we have a very different opinion than most people do over coaching versus training. But where I think you see this go wrong is sticking with the doctor. If the doctor only worried about being, a doctor and talking about what he knows as a doctor, instead of expanding his knowledge as a doctor and continuing to learn with each patient that came through, right? His practice is going to be limited, right? And you see this as a parallel in the affiliate landscape and that the big struggle for most affiliate owners is that as they know it, CrossFit is a training program, right? They call themselves coaches and they think what they do is coaching because they stand in front of a class and they, they've titled themselves coaching, but because they pass through the lens of this is what I know, I'm going to tell you what I know, and I'm going to impart this knowledge onto you. 
training is happening, teaching is happening. And all the struggles that affect 99.9% .9 of all affiliates in small business in general, but in this instance, small businesses or affiliates is through the lens of information, right? Because if only if the only thing that you do is provide training, right? And you provide programming, you provide workouts, you are identifiably the same as every single other CrossFit affiliate. And then that puts you in a competitive market and it's distracted. And then it's really just about like how well you train and how well you teach and how well you communicate. But as you start to move into a different level of a conversation and Matt, you know, it took a little bit of time to do this, but I think he grasped it early on is that coaching is very different than teaching in general. And we've talked about this enough times that you guys should know that like coaching is not about teaching. It's about asking questions. And inside that conversation is where opportunities like being in the doctor's office or being in those meetings, being in those rooms start to actually matter because as a coach, you get to have the ability to start to ask people questions as opposed to come in and be like, let me tell you about the best workouts on the planet and the points of performance, the nine foundational movements, and this is how it's going to change your life, which is really what ends up happening for most crossers. You put them in a room with other people, but as an actual true coach, Matt gets to go in a room and say, why is this a problem for you? And how do I solve that? Right. And that's really where the change starts to happen. But what's important about that is that the beauty of the affiliate is that it is such an effective and potent solution to so many different problems. It never needed to be about what happens there as opposed to what you need to happen there as a client that comes in the door. And I think that that part is, is so overlooked as people progress in their level one, two, three, and four in terms of like how well they can talk about the thing that they're doing in terms of like the actual programming or the methodology rather than the fact that what we're experiencing now is people like Dale and yourself and so many other people being like, what we do here doesn't matter. What do you need? Right. Cause I can speak to that, right. I can solve that problem because what this whole conversation is really about is that the bottled lightning of CrossFit is physical behavioral therapy, right? There's, we all know there's cognitive behavior and linguistic behavioral therapy and lots of different other ones, but physical behavioral therapy, as we know it as CrossFitters, that shit works, right? There's, you know, hundreds of millions of crossers now at this point who will probably tell you that like, I am very different from the day I walked in that affiliate, right? For many different reasons, not least of which, cause I'm stronger and fitter, but like my brain works differently. And that is only possible if somebody's not training you and they start to coach you. And what you well, see is this version of it coming to life. To, to, yeah. And to, to relate it to, because I think if we get too far in the clouds, we might lose some people. I don't know. But um, I already did when you said behavioral therapy in the beginning. They're like, ah, <laughs> oh, what's Froning doing? The to, to your exact point, like a quote that we know Greg Amundsen is the greatest adaptation happens between the ears. Right. And I think some of this stuff we start looking at almost if from the perspective of a vacuum. It's like, oh, well, we know that. We know it means you can go harder in workouts. But no, it, it, that quote, the more I've sat on it, and it was Dale who brought it to me in that perspective in his Portsmouth Method material was like, oh, shit. Yeah. And so to what Tony's saying is, is we get the differentiation between a trainer and a coach would lie in your onboarding process. And what I mean by that is, is if that person comes in and you're so concerned with teaching them the nine foundational movements, then you've already lost them. Then you are indeed a trainer. And I'm not saying, I think these, these words are very important. Stay with me is that you can teach them whatever you want. That doesn't matter. But the girl in my, a gal in my 7 a.m. class um, this morning, when she came in the door for her second onboarding session, she had, she was visibly emotional. She was visibly emotional and I could see it. And, and, you know, and this comes from working towards coaching is having that emotional intelligence. I'm like, sit down, let's talk, let's go through this. And, and, and she very emotionally was worried that this wasn't for her and this or that and, and whatever reason. And we just, and, and again, ask more questions and, and we talked through it and, and it was like, okay, I'm going to, this throws off my timeline of, of what I'm, what I have allotted for her onboarding session. But I also realized she doesn't need, she's so far removed from a sumo deadlift high pole 
to 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 try to cut off her off where she's at now would be to do her a disservice as a coach. And so um, talked her off the ledge, continued, and then she was in 7 a.m. class today and, and tricked her into doing a, a handstand progression where she looked up like, you know, it was just a, a, a downward dog pike against the wall. Now put one foot up, now put another foot up. You're upside down. She didn't have time to think about it. But then she comes down and she kind of looks at me and it's like thumbs up. So you can still do the thing that we love to do, the training part. But as coaches, we can guide them to this thing that they didn't believe they could do in the mm. first place. Right. And, and, and I think that's the magic of it is we don't, and back to that dichotomy is we can go in both lanes of traffic. Right. And you can do the things you can scratch the training itch, but just know that you're scratching that training itch and you can mm -hmm. learn to be a better coach by working on the, the emotional intelligence side of things with people. And then realizing that, you know, if anything, the more better someone gets as a more better, you don't get better at speaking as a coach. Um, but you really, you know, like it's the, the novice and maybe just a lot of folks are stuck in that novice uh, scenario and versus, you know, you really want to have a, a big change in someone's life is listen to them, ask them questions and make them believe that, that you can do it. Right. And, and you want to master class in that go and go see our buddy Tosh next year for, for diesel day. Because he's not mm -hmm. giving cues, he's not giving cues on the points of the performance of the squat. He's he's asking what bullshit is going on in your head and why you're believing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every affiliate owner will tell you, right? Especially now, right? They'll all espouse that you know we're the, the affiliates are the solution to the world's most vexing problem. And you and I have talked about this ad nauseum. I don't know how many different text threads, etc. But you know, and and the belief in that is that, and you Matt have publicly charged people with this, being like, no, like. It's not the solution to the actual problem. Like CrossFit is not a cure, right? In in that it's the solution to the behaviors of that problem, right? Like, you know, to be a literal example, which you and I've talked about, it's not about off the couch, off the carbs. It's about, hey, why did you want to get on the couch in the first place, right? And, and it's mm -hmm. its ability to to get to the root and address the, the, the symptoms versus like, CrossFit doesn't come in and address the symptoms of the problem. Right? We don't come, we don't go after diabetics and we're not the solution to diabetes. We're the solution to the behavior that creates diabetes. Right. And, and I think that this part is so overlooked through the, you know, you know, it can be a lot of different reasons. I don't want to point any fingers at it, but the physicality of CrossFit and in its intensity itself becomes the eternal distraction, right? There's so much to do and so much to work on that people overlook why CrossFit is unique. And like, this will get us into a whole rabbit hole. And I don't want to do that because it will take us an hour. But like the thing that makes CrossFit unique is not in its exposure to the high intensity workouts and in the wads and the times and otherwise in, in the whiteboard, those things matter because they're keeping people there. And we can talk about the psychology of why people, you know, gravitate towards things like that. But we know as CrossFitters that we're different people after we've done CrossFit for any number of time, right? Whether that be a couple of months or, you know, in my case, a couple of decades, right? That has literally physically, truly rewired my brain. And the reason for that is that we have to understand the mechanism of behavior. And, and this is not what this call is about or this podcast is about, but if we know that plasticity is possible through learning, why isn't it then that perfect practice doesn't make perfect. Like this is that age old cliche adage. It's because failure is what makes perfect possible. And this is an important aspect of CrossFit because there is no fucking place on the planet where failure happens more often than inside a CrossFit affiliate, but in a safe situation, right? We've talked about this with these stupid rings before, right? Like CrossFit was unique way back in the day. Cause everybody's like, what the hell are those things hanging from there? Right? Like, and then you saw somebody literally put themselves on top and you're like, oh, that seems easy. And so you, it does look, it did look easy, right? You watch any one of those old quick time <laughs> videos in the journal and you try and you're like, what just happened? I have no idea even how to use my, and so we have to understand that the brain obviously tells the body what to do, but as we know, inside the fitness space, the body also tells the brain what to do. And this is incredibly important because it's through exposure to failure, particularly the neurological aspects of fitness, that plasticity becomes possible. These are things that if you're listening to this, you should already know. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, 
but this is the magic, right? It, it, this is the bottled lightning that happens in CrossFit because it's through that part of it. It's through that exposure to failure, the exposure to new skills and the neurological aspects of fitness that things start to actually change. And so whether you want to direct that at modifying and changing behaviors in addiction or you want to modify and address changing behaviors in your physical office space or whatever that is, it's possible. And there's a reason why it's not happening in the other gyms, in the in the, the brands that won't be named, the, the cheese dicks, so to speak. And that is because what happens in those gyms is perfect practice making perfect. It's the same workouts over and over again with high intensity, but there's no exposure to new skills. And in fact, there's a willful omission of all those skills in those gyms because they have quoted them as unnecessary or unsafe, right? But it's just because they don't know how to teach them. And so we have defended for years why the snatch and the muscle up was important. But even then it was about like the physical application of force and why that was going to transfer to something else in life. But it had nothing to do with that. It was that like, because I kept trying to get on these rings, my brain was like, this is inefficient. I need to fix this problem because I'm going to have to keep doing this. Plasticity is then possible. So then I rewire my brain. But that same thing, that same exposure to failure here leads us to go out in life and be like, this is uncomfortable. I don't like this. I'm going to try to do it. It's inefficient. I'm going to learn it. And that's how physical behavioral therapy, which is a very unstudied field of behavioral therapy, becomes possible only in a CrossFit affiliate. There's no other gyms who are making people fail on a regular basis. And not in like a bad way. Not like, I'm not talking about failing a back squat, although that is technically one. But like, it's the double under, right? It's it's the box jump. It's the muscle up. Yeah. You see it every single day in the gym and we pass it off and we high five it as like, yeah, you knew muscle up. But what you, what you just saw there was a physical interpretation of the neurological rewiring of the brain every single time. And like, well, if I'm you can just, see that happening, it's, it's magic. Well, hundred percent. Right. And I, that's why I still love doing in because I love seeing the person work through them. Right. And, and you know, and, and my, my view of CrossFit is very rigid. And when someone says our sport, to me, that immediately discredits their knowledge of CrossFit. Like to me, CrossFit is a methodology first. The, the, and we, we don't have to go into the games, but the games is an expression of the methodology in, in, in the, the farthest sense. But when you look at that methodology of, of the, even the neurological aspect of, and the organic adaptation of training, but I teach someone how to snatch in our, in our intro sessions, not to teach them how to snatch, it's so that I can learn how they learn. Mm -hmm. Right? And, 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 I, and we get so, sorry, Lisa, do you have something? Or, yeah. No, yeah, I was just going to say, it's, it's in that process that when we truly are coaching, you know, not just training is like you're looking for those opportunities to to see how they learn, how they react to failure, how they react to adversity when something's not just straightforward. And then as coaches, we go, okay, I can now find ways to connect with this person to find out their actual reasons for being here and the actual things that stop them, what got them on the couch in the first place, all that sort of stuff, rather than, no, you will learn to snatch and you will hook grip today if it kills me. Like, it's 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 very different to be so like you said so rigid in that perspective of it's about the movement well no it's about the magic that the movement brings the movement's just the tool that gets us access to all the behaviors and all the vulnerabilities where we can really change lives well the magic totally. of that too is 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 that and it expands on that a little bit too because the magic may be in the movement but the movement is only possible because of coaching Right. And so the, the, the muscle up becomes the perfect example of it, probably because I have literally a decade of traveling the world teaching this thing where it's like you have rooms full of people who showed up every single weekend to hear me teach them how to teach people to do the muscle up, but they never got taught. Right. And instead, I said, why are you struggling with it? Because you can think about the muscle up as the perfect solution that are like the snatch. They're like the two you know, crowning achievements in the cross space. But you can put together the perfect sermon of how to teach a muscle up. It's not going to work. Right. Maybe if you're lucky and like it's the perfect blend of behavior and physical added, you know, capability and, and skills, et cetera. And they might get up there. But the reality is the only way you're going to ever get them on top of those rings is not by teaching them. Right. 
you can tell them what it looks like and what's important, but instead I need to see you try. And then I could be like, okay, maybe this time we try to do that a little bit differently. Okay, let's try this a little bit differently until eventually they are on top of those rings. All the teaching in the world will make them sort of effective at it. And this is important because the thing that makes the magic of CrossFit possible is the coaching, not the training. And so many CrossFitters and so many affiliate owners are so focused on getting the training right and passing the test, so to speak, and being like, I can teach the points of performance perfectly. They're so caught up in that. They don't stop and say, why is this a struggle for you? Right? Because like the, the, the nine foundational movements of CrossFit were not there because they were the perfect movements they're there because they're the perfect screen of movements like i can give them to anybody and diagnose a whole lot of behavioral problems and then i can just start asking questions but if i'm so worried about what i'm going to tell you next you see this with novice coaches all the time is like they're not coaching at all they're just opening their mouth and vomiting all over the whole class the whole time and then they're like was that effective no and it did yeah, not you, feel good at all. You, you lose the ability to read the room and, and, and then all of a sudden you are just a, an exercise or orchestrator. Right. But like, you know, and, and even, you know, to find that middle ground is like, you can ask them why it's a problem for them, or you could just try to figure out why it's a problem for them. Like aside from the, you know, they need to sort out in here what it is, but through my coaching, I'm going to figure out what is this person missing and how can I deliver it to them? And then that becomes my order. I still have all the cues. I still know all the points of performance, but now I have a way to deliver a more effective one in the time that is it's needed because I've actually sat and figured out the person first, right? When we, mm -hmm. when we look at the um, trying to teach movements and then try to get them ready for workouts, we've we've lost already and and we've lost that relationship and we've made it about us and and the magic in the affiliate is the ability to create relationships and to create um those those behavior change you know it's 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 already written in the stars of old glassman lecture of ad hoc ergo proctor hoc this before that therefore this causes that and he's talking about that in the sense of diabetes versus or excuse me obesity versus insulin is that obesity leads to higher insulin, but really it's it's the insulin first uh, that causes it, right? Well, if we're curing chronic disease, we would have by now, right? Yeah. And, and it's because I think ad hoc ergo proctor hoc, we think, oh, this person is getting fitter. They get fit first, therefore their behaviors change. But no, those behaviors can change within the first week, right? Yeah, and we look at yeah, and, and you, you can call it whatever you want, but it's the, like you said, that is what differentiates us. Um, and, and I think it, it's worth exploring like we are because it should be empowering for coaches because I didn't, and, 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 and trainers and affiliates, because I didn't know it until I knew it. And then once I heard it, I couldn't unhear it. Or and then it was, there's a big difference. Right. And so when you want to talk to someone in healthcare, that's what you talk to them about is the behaviors that you're solving. Right. And, and, and that's a much more um, linear conversation because, you know, the magic of CrossFit is you ask a hundred people what they love about CrossFit, you'll get a hundred different answers. You know, community mm -hmm. will come up every time, but you get a hundred different answers and I think we often that creates mud in the water, but what if we use that exact example as the benefit of it is like this program yeah. solves the behaviors that it allows every person to get exactly what they need from it. Mm -hmm. Versus if you ask one of the other cheese dick, <laughs> I will, I will share is, is um, I was just in support of diesel day this past weekend and, uh, and Nicole is trying to make Tosh use cheese dick more instead of like some, <laughs> instead of something more, instead of something more aggressive, we'll say, he's like, no, yeah. I'm trying to work on my language. So it's, it's uh, maybe that's the trend that's going. But, on. Yeah. But if you ask them like what they love about it, then maybe they'd say specifically, Oh, the rowing, or I love that my heart rate's up on the screen, or they would be able to say something very specific. Uh, and I think with CrossFit, the ambiguity that lies in it is actually the strength. And yeah. that's what it is. And we need to lean into that more. And, and really what this all comes back to, you know, my, my vision is, is 
up here in this publicly funded system, if exercise was going to get funded, it would already be funded. Same idea. But it's like, well, uh, psychotherapies are are covered under our, our um, health insurance plan. Well, if I can make CrossFit known as a, some version of behavioral therapy, physical, cognitive, dialectal, or all of them, or maybe it's, again, this, this whole new entity, well, bam, I can prove this to be something that can be funded. And now I've solved the ultimate problem of, of getting this thing covered, right? So mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where the motivation lies in as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, for for everybody that's listening to this too, the the first important thing is that a lot of this time with the trainer coach stuff, I feel like always comes off as like good or bad binary, like one versus the other. And it's not, right? They're just different, right? Just like most things are. And like in, in many ways, the training is responsible for delivering the kernel, right? The L1 kernel as we know it. And it is entirely important for that reason. But it's the coaching that is responsible for curating the behavior because it's through the coaching that we can actually address and, uh, and augment and, and have a positive effect on that. And to Matt's point, like that can happen on day one. That happens before they even remotely even know what the points of performance are of, of the kernel, right, in the training. And, and so it's, it's an incredibly impactful and powerful part of it. But the thing that I think that the affiliate owners need to know is that they all possess it. It's all within them. And it's all in the nuance of how they look at what they do and how they do it. Because if you're very preoccupied with delivering your program to the best of its ability, you know, verbatim, you have a training program and that will work really, really well. But I will question and challenge you on whether or not that's any different than any other training program or platform. Like you can tell me why it's better and your percentage of this and this and that and all these other things. But like, at its core, that's up to your clients to determine. And to the point of like every affiliate owner saying that like what makes them their affiliate specialist community, you're going to have a problem because community is really easy to curate. And I can tell you that a lot of people feel like they belong to a lot of those really weirdly disguised nightclubs that do fitness. And they think that they have a community <laughs> there too. The thing that makes your you know affiliate unique is that, you know, or what make why you love CrossFit rather is it changed your whole life, right? It made you a better fucking person. And it did that because it calls you on the carpet every single workout because it changes your behavior and it changes the way that you interact with the world around you and the workout around you and the people around you and the environment around you. And it makes you ask yourself critical questions of yourself. And, you know, you can get caught up in the physicality of it, but don't overlook the behavioral part of it. Well, exactly, right? And we, those exact, there's, like I said, if we stay in both lanes, we know something like, oh, here's the stimulus of this workout. These kettlebell swings should be unbroken. But just saying that, just saying that isn't good enough. And then coaches, you know, especially level one coaches and, and early level twos, they struggle with how do I get my, my people to buy in versus just changing those wording. I've been, I've been working on that very specifically. As I said, you know, I want you to do these 20 kettlebell swings unbroken. I believe that you can. I believe you can do it at a heavier weight than you can. And if you don't think you can, why is that? And then even them just saying like, oh, shit, like, that's a good point. And then like, you know, this morning's cap workout had that very thing. And I was like, you'll get to a point where you won't want to. But guess what? You can. You're just uncomfortable, but you'll be OK. And then they're like, oh, shit. And then by working on the behaviors that lead to those decisions, guess what? People found intensity. They got smoked. They got ruined because I focused on here first and, and not the, because then we get so disappointed and just, and I'm guilty. I only speak to this because I'm so guilty of it. These should be unbroken. Well, Johnny and Tara and Steve and Jenny didn't do them unbroken. What the hell? Rah, rah, rah. And it just like creates this feedback loop because I became so focused on the training that, and and the and then we feel someone doesn't um, receive the training that it's a knock on us, hmm. right? As opposed to well, no, we're just again going at it from the wrong angle. For sure. Yeah, threshold training has to happen between the years, right? Because like otherwise, it's probably not your threshold. Right. And that's what maybe as we, we think about this, like maybe someone listening to this and if you still are, wow. Whew, and that's a comment on me, not, not my host, but you know, they're like, they're like, 
at least my here's at least my perspective of the whole thing is I wouldn't want someone to be like, are they talking about something different? Like I, I love CrossFit. Are they talking about something different? And it's like, no. no, 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 not at all. The more you dig into this stuff, you the more you realize it's there all along. Even intensity, right? Is 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 you talk about intensity. And um, and Nicole and I were talking about this on the weekend. Is she's like, it's always intensity. And I was like, well, what if we went at intensity through the lens of behaviors and and cognitive and cognition? Because what do we talk about in the level one is relative to what relative to someone's physiological and psychological tolerances. So it's mm-hmm. already in the manual. And so someone's ability to get fitter and see results lies in their cognitive threshold of being able to tolerate intensity, believe in themselves, push themselves harder. And then that comes first. And then the intensity and the impending result of intensity happens second. And it doesn't, so it doesn't change the mechanism at all. It doesn't change the the book at all. It doesn't change anything. It just becomes a more eloquent way to talk about it and deliver it. And really what it comes down to is maybe we just have to look in the mirror and say, wow, am I as good as I could be? And maybe we'll spend more time, you know, working on other things as opposed to, I don't know, spending your 2 p.m. doing muscle ups or whatnot. But I think, you know, that's a good question, you know, to, I guess, circle back to, where we started the podcast and, you know, the affiliate being bigger than you is that's a good question for affiliate owners. You know, am I as good as I could be versus spending, you know, time focusing on, you know, the stuff that, you know, you could delegate, elevate, throw away, stop distracting yourself with is like, am I really using this vehicle to its full potential? Am I being as good as I can be in pursuing my, my mission, my vision, my why, versus you know like you said getting hung up on the you know well you know tony and matt didn't go unbroken well that that sucks they must be you know shitty humans rather than digging into that sort of stuff we and then we'd sit and talk about it for an hour after (laughs) why we were right why we were right for not going unbroken um yeah yeah yeah, right. And it's it's just even looking at our own internal motivations and you know, is is the ring finger um is what are our motivators and, and do we wanna become better trainers as and I'll say specifically trainers in that sense, do we wanna become better trainers to impress mom and dad at HQ, right? To get the pat on the head and whether it becomes a red shirt or just to say, Oh wow, you know, that pat on the head, but um my my mindset was always I want to be a better trainer to be a professional and professionals get paid. Right. And and that was very and that was just my background on my phone for over two years was uh was was uh be a fucking pro. That was just my in person and that just creates that discipline going back to that. It was I was disciplined daily to be as professional as I could be whether it was just showing up on time or dressing a certain way, which has now given me the freedom to go to Denver for the weekend, go to uh, go down to Ohio. And, and by the way, I drove down to Ohio. This is an aside, but also I think it is very relevant to the conversation down to Ohio in a new vehicle that the business paid for in gas that the business paid for. And right, so the discipline in those things gives you the freedoms to use the business to be bigger than and that. You have to continue to have it be bigger than you by using it to become your vehicle, pun or analogy, <laughs> uh, right? Both literally and figuratively. Literally. Yeah, literally and figuratively, your business and your affiliate is your vehicle to do something way bigger than mm-hmm. that, right? It's, so, yeah, it's, it's basic business. If you want to make more money and you want to to have more money, then you need to solve more problems for more people or bigger problems for bigger people. And the the very nature in in training in general, I think, is there's nothing there's no real problem with it at all, except for that it becomes a very specific solution to a very specific problem in most cases because it's it's basically applied knowledge or, or sport specificity, if you want to call it that, or whatever you would like to make it. 
but you take it and you apply it and you implement it into something like a field of coaching where you can use this practice uh, in many different fields. And I think what we'll see in the next handful of years is a lot of CrossFit coaches who become coaches, not trainers, find that they're very effective in boardrooms. They'll find that they're very effective in large um, office spaces in, in that nature because they understand that like coaching is not about delivering information. It's about understanding the application or the implementation. And that really just looks very different. And so what is very cool about Matt's story is obviously, and I know we kind of segued into what makes the affiliate special is that like, because of his realization and his, his ability to grasp the difference between training and coaching and really the magic of CrossFit is that, Hey, this thing will solve a lot of problems for a lot of different people. And that makes him feel empowered to kick in the door of a place where he would otherwise with just training behind you. Like, what are you going to do? Walk in there and be like, let me tell you about 21, 15, 9 and how it's going to change your life. But like, because of him understanding that like, I don't have to go in here and teach them anything. Instead, I'm going to go in here and learn as much about them as possible. And then I'm going to solve their problems. Right. Like, and that is a basic skill set for business in general. And, you know, every affiliate owner is in possession of that solution and that opportunity if and only if you start with, what you want your affiliate to be, not what your affiliate should look like or could look like. You need to understand that like it's your business, it's your vision and it's your future and it's your journey. And it's got to start there. And you know, Matt, that led him there. And sure he took a couple of little segues and left turns and right turns, but it's through the realization that like I can solve a lot of problems for a lot of people literally with the use of CrossFit. And mm -hmm. not well, yeah, and by you, my brain. Exactly. And, and like, I think if someone was listening and be like, Oh, it must be nice. Um, or, or that, like, again, it's been three years of making many, many wrong turns, but you know, action, action is the cure for anxiety and action creates, um, momentum, momentum builds belief belief helps you get towards purpose. And then once you have, once you hit purpose, as Tony says, it's the matrix, you answer the phone and you're, you're on the other side. Like you hit you, once you found purpose, it's, you just can't go back. There's no unseeing it. And, and it's, but you, but it starts with like, what should I, you know, is, is um, a, an affiliate owner from across the province uh, there that's, we have 10 of them up here, three territories. Um, she, she was at, she was very curious. You know, we talked at the Canadian affiliate gathering in Montreal a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, again, she asked if I, she could pick my brain and we know she needs coaching, not advice, but I gave her advice because I was driving home. And, uh, and I was just like, she's asking me about the healthcare staff and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, listen, the first thing you can do is stop being nice and stopping, stop to solve other people's problems. Like stop asking for permission to have a profound impact in either one person, one group or one town or one, one province, right? That's the one thing, like nobody asked me for permission if they could close my affiliate down and maybe, maybe there's some deep rooted trauma in there, but I'm like, I'm <laughs> never, I'm never going to ask for permission to be successful by helping people. Mm. Right. And, and, and it's, it's, which has led me to that purpose, but it's, it's just been that constant pursuit of just do something like you know it's like do do anything do it do something go knock on doors do, just no doesn't mean no right mm -hmm. it just means it's, it's the actual as tony said right we're so willing to attempt a one rep max snatch eight times in a row because we failed seven of them well why is we as affiliate owners trainers coaches not applying that same logic to emailing eight different companies or eight different doctor's offices or trying eight different new programs because you may fail the first seven, but that, that moment, that bar slam, boom, that goes on Instagram, you know, well, maybe that exists in me getting CrossFit recognized as a behavioral therapy and covered by Ontario insurance. Well, that's me slamming the bar down, bam, life's work complete. We move on. That's one hell of a bar slam, though. That's much better than a 300 pound snatch. Um, and I think, but I also think, go ahead, Lisa. No, 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 you go. I was about to wrap no. it up, but you go. No, no, you give say, your final thoughts. Pretty much the same thing. 
Uh, for those of you guys who like this podcast and you happen to be coming to some of the affiliate summits, Matt will gladly slam the bar with you and tell you this exact same story. Um, he'll be in Boston. I'm dragging him down there. So you got that opportunity to see him there. And then um, potentially in Canada West, I suppose we might be up there. Too, be, be prepared to be on that one. Be prepared to be kind of like uneasy. It's yeah. like, I'm uneasy <laughs> around this guy because he says things that I know I need to hear, but man, they're not, that's not that nice. That goes to get along. We're a little prickly. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, you guys are not selling people to turn up to the affiliate uh, booth yeah. or presentation. It's like, do I want to feel uneasy today? It's uh... no, but it's definitely worth your cool. while. Bobby if you are... We're here to get drunk. <laughs> Oh, you know, if, if you are in the vicinity of the affiliate summits, you should definitely go visit the um, gang at Fit Affiliate. I'll have FOMO from across the pond, but or the the ditch, whatever we are now. Um, You're a prison but, colony for still for a reason. <laughs> yeah, still in the prison colony. Um, but thanks, Matt. I think we've had some good insights, and I know that uh, we've barely scratched the surface. So we'll get you back on for chat number four whether you'll beat tosh to, to four or not we'll see could be a thing um but for those of you listening please like subscribe um give us your feedback uh drop a review and also um follow us at fit affiliate on the grams that's where we hang out that's where all the cool stuff is and also there's a link in the show notes to subscribe to our weekly newsletter the paradigm periodical which is full of thought-provoking goodness so you'll definitely want to get into that as well. So until the next episode, see you next week. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's show. Please remember to like and subscribe on your favorite platform. And if you know an affiliate owner, a coach or entrepreneur that would benefit from hearing our conversations, please share this with them. We love the feedback and support we have from you guys, our audience. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can find all the useful links in the show notes. We would love to connect with you. Keep doing the great work.